Well, everyone, I hope you're having an awesome weekend. I know that I am because we're going to be going over some stuff regarding the Nintendo Switch and potential games that could be coming based on actions happening from Nintendo at the patent slash trademark offices in different countries. I just want to note, of course, that, look, none of this stuff is confirmed to be games that are actually coming. They're just games that make sense, and the timing and the mystery around some of this stuff is a little weird because some of the things we're going to talk about didn't actually need trademark renewals or anything like that because the old ones aren't expired and some of these are brand new and it's just very strange what's happening and i think this does have to do with probably the second half of 2024 so we're going to dive into this look we spent a lot of time talking about nintendo switch 2 but today we're going to be focusing on what might be happening on switch moving forward by looking into some of these trademarks and patents that have come up over the last week or two now that being said, before I dive into this, if you're enjoying the video, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Stay tuned for all the latest stuff happening with Nintendo and, well, other companies as well with our VG News episode every Friday. All right, let's dive into this. And the first thing we have here is this Australian government IP trademark. And this has to do with Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush. Now, this was a Wii U game that is quite fascinating. You can see the class of it. It's for video games and accessories and anything regarding this game. And you can see that it was accepted on May 3rd, 2024, reported on May 3rd. It was filed actually back on March 11th, 2024. So they did file this a couple months ago, quickly got approved. Now the thing is, Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush wasn't actually due for renewal so it wasn't like they needed to do this and this is separate from the original trademark and i'm not really sure why uh what i do know is that kirby is a, a really amazing game and if you actually look at this game it required the use of the stylus. Now, that could obviously be replaced with just a you know, the touch screen and using your finger. And maybe that is something where they tell you this is only playable in handheld mode. But then if they do bring this to Switch, they could maybe put the stylus into one of the control sticks. It would be pretty wonky if I'm completely honest, but technically feasible. So, well, I, I don't really know what the use case is here, if that game in particular is going to come over. I do know that it's a really, really damn good game, and I wouldn't mind if they at least attempted, even if it was only available to play in handheld mode. Again, that is something that we'll have to see if it comes over and what Nintendo does, and it would make sense to get something Kirby this year, because we usually get something Kirby every year. Now, this other game we're going to look at actually is an originally a 3DS game, and it is called Full Blocks. So if you see here, Full Blocks, they filed this also back on March 11th and got accepted and approved and reported back on May 2nd. And this is just a really, really interesting game. It is a 3D puzzle box platforming game. It was originally, again, a 3DS game. Nintendo published it, but it was made by a different company. The original patent is actually not filed by Nintendo, and that patent is still active. It was a 2015 patent, trademark, etc. This is now a brand new one, separate from that one as well. And again, Full Box was a very good 3DS game, if you guys didn't get a chance to play it. Really clever puzzles and platforming elements, and look, obviously if it's going to come to Switch, it'll be a Full HD. This is one that is way more transferable uh it doesn't require any sort of unique touch features that you can't just re replicate over on the nintendo switch so i actually am pretty excited about that one and i sincerely hope that full blocks ends up coming over now this last one look this one is a strange one in that this is actually in the United States at the USPTO office. And I'll give a little credit here to Mike Odyssey, who originally made this publicly known. And we're talking about this USPTO case number 7931373. You can go ahead and look this up yourself. And you can see that March 14, 2024 is when this all got approved and thrown out there. As you can see, it's an effective November 1st, 2017. 
Um, it's under the Madrid agreement concerning the international registration of marks and protocol. Okay, that's all fine, but let's go ahead forward on the document. You can see some additional Im information here saying color mark claim. The color is green, yellow, white, brown, gold, and beige is claimed for the future of the mark. The mark consists of a beige facial man with yellow hair, green and white eyes. The man is wearing a green hat and clothing, brown boots, brown belt with a gold buckle and white leggings. Yes, folks, we're talking about Link from the Legend of Zelda. So there's no three-dimensional mark trademark here or sound. Uh, um, it is a trademark, though. They do have an image, which we're going to look at here in a moment, filed by Nintendo. Uh, and it is basically this trademark is for re recorded electronic game programs for video games. And then obviously you see it on here for merchandise reasons. These are all like different types of merchandise that could be used with this particular version of Link. And what version are we talking about? Well, none other than Toon Link himself. This is the image provided by this this whole thing and honestly folks this could be wind waker right like it could be phantom hourglass or spirit tracks uh but this is definitely uh wind waker that sort of link you can see with the belt buckle there that's very much a wind waker style link uh they've used this art direction as well in other games like four swords and stuff like that but the belt buckle is the dead giveaway that this is wind waker link now Obviously, when we're talking about the Wind Waker coming over to Nintendo Switch, this isn't a new idea. Rumors have floated around that not just the Wind Waker HD, but also Twilight Princess HD are both ready to go for Nintendo Switch and are just sitting on a shelf. I don't know how real that stuff is. These are reports coming from fairly reputable places, but the rumors around this have existed for multiple years. Now, we know Nintendo does sit on some games, Metro Prime Remaster was literally shadow dropped last year, meaning the game was done probably before we got to February. So that would tell you that, yeah, they uh, sat on that game for a little while. I don't know if they would be sitting on these games for multiple years, but you never know. It could be a planned holiday blitz of, you know, that new that Kirby game, not the new one, but the Wii U Kirby game. Uh, and then you bring over the Wind Waker, and then maybe you drop a little full blocks. And that can kind of give a idea of Nintendo continuing these HD ports remasters as the theme for this year for Nintendo Switch. And look, if these games all get announced, maybe even sprinkle in a little Twilight Princess HD just for the hell of it. I don't think they would release them together as a dual pack, but you never know. I just have to say, look, I think it's still a pretty weak year for Switch relying on so many damn ports and remasters and remakes, but I will note that at least Nintendo's giving us content. If you remember at the end of the Wii era, the end of even like the final year that 3DS was officially supported before it got discontinued. If you remember, obviously the final year of Wii U, there was very few games at all coming out. We're not just talking about like brand new games, even ports, remasters, remakes. There was some games, but Nintendo was publishing very, very few. Instead, this year, they're averaging a game published every single month. Like we didn't get one in April, but then we got one right away in May and we're getting one at the end of May and we're getting another one in June. So Nintendo is averaging publishing a game at least every single month this year. So Nintendo, if this is the final full year of Nintendo Switch, is at least been giving us content uh, and people are enjoying that content. Like we're not going to sit here and pretend that not everyone is excited by nintendo's lineup i might not be excited by the lineup so far this year thousand year door maybe being the most exciting thing but that's okay because i have such a big backlog and one thing i do want to note there was this interesting tweet uh thrown out by friend of the channel rule of two review uh over on uh, over on twitter and it is something that i want to just emphasize here towards the end of the video. I know we're all excited for Switch 2 and the next Nintendo Direct and the new supposed Donkey Kong game that's rumored out there and the new 3D Mario and Metroid Prime 4. And the thing is, Nintendo's going to blow our socks off at some point, right? We're going to get that Direct that showcases the games or we're going to get that announcement from Nintendo. Uh, th there's a lot of things that could happen. I mean, May 7th is a day that we're maybe hoping for something, although it might not be much. Well, I just want to throw out that it is okay, as, as Rule of Two Review put out there, it is okay to be really excited for and anticipating this stuff, but we don't need to, one, get really disappointed in the way things are now, and two, get really mad at Nintendo. In the end, we're just talking about video games, and in the grand scheme of life, while a lot of us might spend a bunch of our lives playing video games, life isn't about 
video games. They are just something we do for enjoyment, for fun, maybe uh, to help with our emotional state at times. It can be a very important part of our life, but they're not our entire life. And I think it's important to remember that regardless of what rumors are true, what rumors aren't true, uh, when Nintendo's going to blow our socks off, maybe it's not even till 2025. The point is that everything's going to be okay. <laughs> You know, we don't need to get super down about things. We have a ton of games that have come into existence just in my lifetime, and video games existed before my lifetime. There are so many games in our back catalog we can go in, so many different sales going on. Nintendo even putting some of their games on Switch on sale uh, at random points. We're seeing various Walmarts throwing out sales. The point is there's just a lot of content already, like 12,000 games or something on Nintendo Switch. You could still find something, maybe if you could sift through that damn eShop, uh, that you will enjoy. So I'm just going to sit back and go, while well, this might not be the most exciting year for many of us, myself included for Nintendo, everything's going to be all right. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.